Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So recently we've done a few drag races and we do drag races every time a new aircraft comes out. So the JF-17's just come out, the F-16C's just come out, so we have to drag race them against the other aircraft and that's to find out how fast they are in a straight line in terms of acceleration. And that doesn't always work out to how it should work out on paper because on paper it doesn't really factor in things like aerodynamic resistances about uh, the angle of attack profile as the aircraft's accelerating and so on so we just find it an interesting thing to do and from that you guys have asked us to find the power to weight ratios of those aircraft so we can compare them to the results of those tests so we've gone and done that for y'all we've got two scenarios one the aircraft is empty so no fuel and no internal gun rounds is that realistic no but that is how we do the drag races bear in mind with no fuel or almost no fuel and without any bullets in the guns and because it's a game we can turn off fuel burn they can't obviously do that in real life the second scenario is fully fooled with internal fuel and internal gun rounds but no external stores and no external pylons if they can be turned off we've got the weight of the aircraft in pounds we've got the power of the engine or engines combined in pounds thrust or ps metric horsepower obviously warbirds helicopter is going to be in ps and then we simply divide that by that and you get the power to weight pounds to pounds or ps to pounds one caveat is that the thrust so these guys here the thrust is measured a at sea level and obviously as you go up higher your engine is much less efficient so it will be much less powerful and b this is what we call static maximum thrust so this is the thrust that the engine makes when it's not moving through the air when an engine starts moving through the air due to elemental physics then the less power that a jet engine can create so this is only relevant at standstill or very low speed and low now that said most generally speaking most of these engines will scale equally in terms of altitude if one loses about half its power at 50,000 feet so the other there are some exceptions if we look at the AGS 37 I can't find it there but if that there it is that one is finely tuned for ground that one is finely tuned for low altitude so that won't scale very well in terms of altitude these guys here are a bit simpler our metric horsepower measured ones although they will both reduce power as they increase in altitude obviously as well they don't have so much of a problem in terms of moving forward because the choppers just don't go very fast and a piston engine isn't massively affected by uh, forward motion so let's look at the figures empty in our dream scenario that we use in our drag races the f-15c is absolutely the king and unbeatable its bare airframe is very light that's what uh, 14 metric tons that is very light for a, for a big power fighter and it's just got so much horsepower those engines themselves aren't actually that horse are uh, that powerful the pratt and whitney's that we've got the old pratt and whitney's that we've got here in dcs much less powerful than the ge's that are being put into these f-15s or the ge that has gone into the f-16c there but because there's two of them and it's just not that heavy, 1.62 power to weight. Next, and this is a real surprise. Well, this will be a surprise to some people. It's not a surprise to us because we run these drag races. What happens is the AV-8B pretty much wins along with the F-15C until you get to about three miles, at which point the aerodynamic resistance becomes too high for the AV-8B and it can't push through uh, about 500 knots or so or a little bit higher although this has a massive power to weight ratio due to aerodynamics it's not a supersonic fighter it tops out at about 500 ish and then slowly creeps decre increases up to about 580 but that up to about 400 knots is just about the fastest thing here weird yes it is and if you ever watch them at an air show when they're lightly fueled how fast they can accelerate on a runway compared to an f-15 or a mig-29 it's absolutely amazing next mig-29 a really good fire it's a light interceptor but it just it's a really good power to weight ratio two relatively powerful engines on a lightweight airframe that's nearly as light as an f-16 that's how light they built it uh, 1.52 and that will surprise no one that does uh, almost wins in our drag races along with the f-15c next again a real surprise su-33 is a really heavy aeroplane i think it's the heaviest here 43 was a tomcat basically pretty much the same as a tomcat but because the engines are so powerful with special afterburner mode which you can be used in a drag race you can get up to 65 and a half thousand pounds of thrust which is just unbeatable and again as you see it beats pretty much everything as i did and i came fourth exactly uh, uh it was f15 uh, that f16 and i was fourth the su-33 so don't think the su-33 is a slouch just because it's heavier than the su-27 and j11 yes it is but with special afterburner mode on while, it, while it's running you are 
incredibly fast, faster even than a MiG 29S in terms of acceleration. MiG 29S slightly down because it's just a heavier airframe with the same engine power. F 16C, my baby, uh, just under kind of nine and a half metric tons, thereabouts. 30,000 pounds almost with the GE that we've got in the block 50. So it's a really good power plant. And I've got 1.48. So can't compete with an F 15, certainly. Um, and you'll see that with the video that's coming out, I think, tonight, uh, F-15 versus F-16, but it's not bad. J-11 um, and the Su-27, pretty much identical. They've got the same Saturns, uh, at least the versions we get, and got the same weight. So that's pretty good, to be honest, uh, for, for an empty fighter. Uh, that will change when we add fuel in it, of course, because that is a heavyweight, uh, a superiority fighter. That's an interceptor. Well, that's technically not true, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, FA-18C, 25,633, uh, 35,500, 1.38, not bad. Uh, it's not really a power fighter, so it's punching its weight pretty well there. F-14B, a little bit surprising, but again, these results show out in the drag races. This is where it comes in the drag race behind the F-18, behind the flankers. Uh, 44,000 pounds, it's the heaviest here. Uh, just over 60,000 pounds of thrust, it's very powerful with the, I think it's F-100s, I forgot now. Um, and 1.37 uh, next to the JF-17 Block 1 not too bad considering it's a really lightweight cheap fighter it's really light the key for this is the lightness it's so light uh, 20,000 pounds just under 1.32 Mirage 2000 holding its weight there um, at 1.28 MiG-19 and this shows in the results it's actually incredibly fast faster than a MiG-21 in terms of acceleration because of its power and its weight uh, MiG-21 we're getting low now. AGS 37, 1.1. F5, we're down below one now. Uh, SU25. Uh, the SU25 non tango is actually not bad. It's almost the, it's a good power to weight as an F5. And if you go and fly it, you'll see what I mean. It's actually can keep up with some low end fighters. SU25 tango, we're getting heavy now. A10, obviously, 0.73. Um, MiG 15, C101. F-86, which is pretty miserable. Um, kin kinematically, this plane here is a lot more impressive than this plane here. But because this gets a G-suit and some other stuff, it generally is considered better than that. But it's debatable. And the L-39 down there. And then you've got these aren't really comparable with these. It's a different measurement of power. So you can't compare thrust to horsepower. There's a conversion you have to do. But um, we can see here that... By far, the best power-to-weight ratio in terms of metric horsepower is the IE-16 uh, Type 24. Then the Kerr first, then the Spit, then the Fokker Wolf Dora, then the MI-8 for what it's worth is incredibly powerful. And you know if you drive them, this is the fastest chopper in DCS. PF-51, PF, uh, P-51, Fokker Wolf uh, A-8, which is, to be honest, brilliant playing but miserable in terms of power and speed. It really is miserable. Uh, the Huey, the Gazelle... Christian Eagle, the Yak, and the K50 is the worst, actually, even though it can go really fast. That was actually quite interesting. It might be worth us double-checking that, just to make, I, make sure I haven't uh, only put one engine there, but that, it really is bad. Next, fuel. So, full internal fuel, and the internal gun that's in there anyway, but the bullets for it, the actual bullets can weigh a lot, especially in some of these aircraft. So, the main contributing factor now, things will change, because what we'll see is that the air superiority fighters are massively weighed down by their vast amounts of fuel, and that's because they're designed to take lots of fuel, so they can have a high loiter time to complete their mission. We're talking F-16, we're talking Su-33, even though that's still quite high, J-11, Su-27, these are all air superiority fighters. Uh, 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 FA-18C is an... Oh, uh, there we go. It's a fleet defense, but it's essentially air superiority as well. Um, so these are slipping down. In fact, the F-14's gone up a bit. That's a bit weird. Um, and the interceptors are going to push up. F-16 is essentially interceptor. I know it's multi-role, but what it was designed around. MiG-29 interceptor, multi-role, but that's what it's designed around. Push right up to the top now, 1.15. So if you're actually f if fueling that in a game and you're fueled, you'll see that this and actually accelerate fastest. Again, that's what we see with our fuel drag races. F-15, still good because it's just so powerful and the frame is quite light. Uh, and note that the F-15 carries most of its fuel on bags anyway for its mission. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why it's so good. F-16 is good, that's full fuel and gun, and we're still 1.07, which is pretty impressive. AVAB, incredible, fully fueled with gun round. Uh, no, this doesn't have gun rounds, it doesn't have a gun. A standard, so it's 1.04, still amazing, still over one. So fully fueled, in theory, that can take off straight up um, like a rocket. SU-33, fully fueled, and it carries 
all of its fuel in its bags, uh, in its internal tanks, and its own gun, 1.01. It just shows that how much power those engines can create in a 33. Really impressive. F-14B fully fueled without bags, but with a gun, almost one. So that's pretty impressive. So power to weight ratio of one means pretty much you can go up like a rocket from zero if, if you put it on a ramp and just went straight up. Theoretically, you wouldn't be able to do that, but you know what I'm saying. JF-17B1, um, actually not too bad in what, six, uh, seven, eighth place, uh, 0.97. All around, it's been a really impressive aircraft that has, for the price of it, um, it's pretty, I know everyone slags it off, it's pretty much the best thing here for the price. Uh, FA, not the DCS price, the real life price, FA-18C, uh, we've got here 0.97. It's okay. J11 was slipping down. Again, these fighters carry all of their loiter fuel in their internal bags. So, that you know, they're pushing up to £60,000. Um, so, with all that power, it's just not enough. Mega 19P, again, really impressive. It's really powerful aircraft, and you'll know that as soon as you fly it. Mirage 2000 slipping down now, and it's just loaded up with all the gas. It's down to 0 0.9. Mega 21 there. AGS 37. SU 25, still up relatively high for a ground attack plane. Um, a lot higher than the F5, 25T, the MiG-15 is all the way down here, A10, and these guys swap about a bit, and here it's pretty much the same, I-16, BF, in fact, it's almost the same order, almost the same order, look, and we'll have to go and check that KF-50. So that's what you wanted, I hope um, you enjoyed that and that was useful, and we'll see you later.